On this channel, we have been discussing DACA, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, in light of the recent decision by the U.S. District Court that DACA was unlawful. DACA, of course, is a promise by the administration not to seek the removal of certain undocumented aliens who are currently in the United States. Those are aliens who were brought to the United States by their parents when they were minors. As a result, many DACA recipients consider themselves Americans. They speak English, they act like Americans, and they have American values. In many ways, the country in which they were born is just as foreign to them as it may be for many other Americans. But they are in danger of being deported to that country, pretty much at the whim of the administration. Now, these young people could have benefited from the DREAM Act, a piece of proposed legislation that would have granted legal status to such young people who were brought to the United States by their parents. But the DREAM Act failed to pass Congress, and as a result, President Obama implemented DACA as a temporary measure to give dreamers as close to a normal life as he thought was possible. Now, DACA does not confer legal immigration status. DACA does not lead to citizenship. And DACA recipients have no hope of ever being able to do things like vote. Nonetheless, DACA recipients can receive work authorization. And as such, they can obtain a social security number. And this has been the key to allowing DACA recipients many of the benefits that U.S. citizens and permanent residents enjoy such as the ability to go to work and to get a job and to buy a home. Last week, we talked about DAPA, the Deferred Action for Parents of Americans, which was a similar program to DACA, and then we discussed how the Fifth Circuit found the DAPA program to be unlawful, and therefore how the Fifth Circuit enjoined the U.S. government from implementing DAPA. This week, we're going to talk about how the Trump administration, led by his first Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, tried to use the DAPA decision in order to terminate DACA. In 2016, we saw an entirely new administration win the White House. And in several ways, Donald Trump was the polar opposite of Barack Obama. Nowhere was this more evident than in the area of immigration. Trump attempted to create greater restrictions on immigration, both on legal immigration as well as illegal immigration. On the issue of DACA, Trump had essentially waffled. On the campaign trail, Donald Trump promised that he wanted to eliminate the DACA program. But once Donald Trump was president, he declared that he loved dreamers and that he wanted to find a way to keep them in the United States. Trump's first attorney general was Jeff Sessions, former senator from Alabama and a huge proponent of restricting immigration opportunities. Sessions was not a fan of DACA. But remember, up until 2018, DACA itself had never been challenged in court. DAPA had the Deferred Action for Parents of Americans, but DACA had not. So we did not have a decision of any court finding DACA illegal. Nonetheless, in 2017, Attorney General Sessions decided that it was time to do something about DACA. So he held a press conference, and he stated that he found DACA was unconstitutional. Therefore, he was instructing his acting secretary for Homeland Security to terminate the program. Sessions issued a memorandum wherein he stated that DACA suffered from the same legal defects as DAPA. Therefore, he did not believe that it was in the government's interests to defend DACA. Based on this memo and using only Attorney General Sessions' reasoning that DAPA suffered from the same legal defects as DAPA, the acting secretary for Homeland Security then announced the termination of DACA. Under this termination, no new applications would be accepted. People who had work authorization that was expiring in the next six months would be allowed to apply for a renewal of their work permit and that would be granted for another two years. However, all other extensions of work authorization would then be denied. 
But the Trump administration's attempts to terminate DACA was challenged. It was challenged in the courts, and that challenge made it all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. The case that reached the U.S. Supreme Court was called the Department of Homeland Security versus the Regents of the University of California. Now, in order to understand the Supreme Court's ruling, you need to understand how the Administrative Procedures Act works. Specifically, you need to understand when and how an administration can change its interpretation of a statute. The Administrative Procedures Act, or the APA, creates the rules that govern how and when an administrative agency can interpret a statute that is the law that is passed by Congress in order to make its rules. But interpretations of legislation, policies, and rules that are based on those interpretations, they can and do change from administration to administration. In order to address how an administration can change its rules, we have the 1984 Supreme case called Chevron versus NRDC. Now, boiling all of this down to a nutshell and giving basically an oversimplification, when an administrative agency chooses to change the rules, that is, it chooses to change how it interprets the language as used by Congress, it must first acknowledge that its rules are being changed. It then must provide a reasoned explanation for that change. And much of the litigation over this area is whether the decision as issued by the administration is a reasoned one. If the decision is not a reasoned decision, if it does not qualify as a reasoned decision, then it is arbitrary and capricious, and therefore the rule change itself is defeated. And this is essentially what happened in the Regents of the University of California decision. It was a decision written by the Chief Justice, John Roberts. Now, while Chief Justice Roberts is generally considered a conservative, at times he can be something of a wild card. He has surprised conservatives in the past by siding with the liberals on the court. And this is one of those cases where Chief Justice Roberts did exactly that. The Chief Justice focused on the reason for the termination as provided by the Department of Homeland Security and whether that reasoning was arbitrary and capricious. Roberts held that the rationale used by DHS in this case failed, and that was because it only took into consideration Attorney General Sessions' determination that DACA had the same legal defects as DAPA. Specifically, the Chief Justice held that the Department of Homeland Security failed to consider. Were there alternative policy choices to the one that they had chosen? Could they continue to defer the removal of those aliens who were undocumented without issuing work authorization? Was there any reasonable reliance by the DACA recipients on the 2012 DACA memorandum? And could the Department of Homeland Security accommodate any such reasonable reliance? The point here being not that the administration could not terminate DACA, but that the way in which the Trump administration terminated DACA was arbitrary and capricious. That is, it left the door open for the possibility that DACA could be terminated in the future, provided that the administration took into consideration all the points that the Chief Justice had raised. This decision was issued in June of 2020, and quite frankly, if the Trump administration had wanted to, it could have followed the rationale of the Chief Justice and attempted to terminate DACA once again. But for whatever reason, the Trump administration chose not to do that. And this is despite the fact that the summer of 2020 was a very active summer for the Trump administration in terms of adopting more restrictive immigration regulations. Now, the sum total of all the litigation that we have so far leaves us in a very interesting situation. On the one hand, we have a decision by the U.S. Supreme Court that says that the Trump administration's attempt to terminate DACA was unlawful, and therefore DACA continues as a program at least unless and until a new administration tries to terminate it in a way that is consistent with the Supreme Court's requirements. 
But now we have a U.S. District Court decision that says that DACA itself is unlawful. And that court has enjoined the Biden administration from accepting any new applications under DACA. But while these two decisions are in tension with each other, they're not necessarily in conflict. So far, the Supreme Court has never been asked to rule on whether DACA itself was unlawful. It is only ruled that the way the Trump administration attempted to terminate DACA was unlawful. Therefore, so long as the Biden administration does not try to terminate DACA, those who have already been receiving benefits should continue to be safe, at least for now. It is only if we get a new administration, and that administration follows the prescription of the Supreme Court in the case of the Regents of the University of California, that the current DACA holders could find themselves with their benefits being terminated. Meanwhile, of course, no new applicants can be accepted. And as confusing as all this may be, it is a situation that can legally coexist. But it does leave open the question of what we're going to do about DACA in the future. And as I see it, the Biden administration has three options. The Biden administration could pursue congressional action. The administration could reissue DACA, however, this time in a way that is compliant with the Administrative Procedures Act, or it could just choose to do nothing. Let's talk about congressional action. That would be the best of all worlds. Essentially, what we would be doing is getting Congress to pass the DREAM Act. Now, this was a popular program, even with Republicans. But the problem is getting past the filibuster, the, the vote for cloture. Right now, with the Senate being divided 50-50 and the Democrats having nominal control due to the fact that the vice president is a Democrat, well, this means that Mitch McConnell's very purpose is to be obstructionist, to try to deny the Biden administration any legislative victories, just as he was during the Obama administration. Plus, a significant number of Republicans now see it as their duty to try to prevent as many non-whites from being able to vote as possible. There is tremendous pressure within the party not to legalize the status of dreamers because such dreamers could potentially vote Democrat. The point there being that even though the Democrats have nominal control of the Senate, and even though they can pass legislation with a 50 vote plus the vote of the vice president, that first they have to get this, the measure to the floor of the Senate through a vote to close debate, a vote for cloture. And in order to pass a vote for cloture, there needs to be a vote of 60 senators. That would mean they would have to convince 10 Republicans. In this current political situation, I just don't see 10 Republicans opting to join the Democrats to vote for cloture and therefore allowing the DREAM Act to come to the floor of the Senate for a vote. The measure is very likely going to be filibustered. Well, then we have option two, and that is further executive action. Now, we have the decision out of the Southern District of Texas, the decision by U.S. District Judge Hainan. That decision found DACA to be unlawful. One of the bases that Judge Hainan found that DACA was unlawful was because it did not go through the notice and comment process as required by the Administrative Procedures Act. Well, this is an easy fix. It could be that the administration submits DACA and even an expanded form of DACA for notice and comment in the Federal Register. In fact, if the administration was to go this route, they might as well attempt to reauthorize DAPA, Deferred Action for Parents of Americans, in the same manner. And by passing it using the notice and comment procedures of the APA, now there's an argument that it is cured at least part of the unlawfulness as found by Judge Hainan. Now, I believe that the administration is going to try to continue with the litigation first. Specifically, if the decision that DACA is unlawful reaches the Supreme Court, and if the Supreme Court agrees that DACA is unlawful, this creates a political advantage for the Biden administration. You see, the Supreme Court is currently split six to three on conservative and liberal justices. 
If the Supreme Court were to vote this way in upholding the decision that DACA was unlawful, well, then it can be used by the Biden administration to argue that there needs to be reform of how the Supreme Court is made up. Moreover, it keeps the issue of what we do about DREAMers and the DREAM Act alive so that Democrats can use that in their congressional elections. And then, when the litigation does end up with a big loss for DACA, that's when I see that the Biden administration could choose to go the route of trying to go through notice and comment in the Federal Register. The administration could also choose to do nothing. We have the Texas versus United States decision, which only prevents new applicants from being granted DACA. And then we have the Supreme Court case, the Regents of the University of California, which says that you cannot terminate DACA without considering the effect on the people who already have work permits. So for now, current DACA recipients are safe. It's only if we get a Republican administration and a Republican administration who understands what they are doing, who understands the ins and outs of the Administrative Procedures Act, that there's any danger that there'll be any executive action that will terminate DACA altogether. So this means that current DACA recipients, well, they're basically safe. And this is going to allow Congress to kick the can down the road again, at least until there's another crisis that actually threatens to take away DACA benefits. And even then, that can be used as a political issue that the Democrats can use in their election campaigns. So what do you think? How should the Biden administration proceed? Do you think that there's any chance of passing any legislation to address this issue? Let me know in the comments below. Give us a like, tell your friends about us, and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. If there are any topics you would like me to address in the future, please let me know in the comments below. Now, I don't like talking about this, but I am currently disabled because of complications following cancer surgery. If you're feeling generous, I'll have a link to my PayPal account in the description below. Thank you.